Good day everyone, I'm Pablo Linares with STI Global and today's video uh, is going to be on the Human Errors series. This will, this will be the video number two and uh, on this video I'm trying to um, give you a lot of information uh, when you do your, uh, I could say, uh, daily inspections, hundred hour inspections and even uh, when doing a major face on a helicopter, uh, this uh, one uh, peculiar um, um, defect or error on, on, on damage is called fritting. And fritting pretty much is something that really uh, stand out out of everywhere, but you have to learn uh, about where to look into the, uh, the characteristic of the fritting. Freeing in a way is a movement between two parts that uh, is caused maybe for lack of torque, wear, uh, lack of chim, pinch or preloading. And this kind of a uh, characteristic of a damage or a defect or an issue uh, is very good for any kind of inspection, but have one setback washing. If you're going to be doing, for instance, a 100 hour inspection, and you wash the helicopter first, all the indication of freedom is gonna be flush away and it's gonna be very hard to find these issues. So for instance, on this uh, uh, area, this is called the pylon area, this one here. This is where the transmission goes on the medium group on bell line, uh, talking about 205, 212, 412. And uh, during uh, any uh, phases or inspection, you have some panels here for inspecting, you can have it in here, remove it on both sides. On this side here, on the right side, the same panel like here, you're gonna have on the other side. And at uh, this peculiar uh, picture I'm gonna show you here, uh, around, around this section, uh, I can say it around here. Well, you're gonna be on, on the, in the cabin, looking inboard on the right side. You're gonna be able to look at around this area, okay? Now, when you're doing this kind of inspection and you pay attention to freeing, you can see right there this black uh, section, and that is called freeing. That tells you right there something is not right, something is loose, something is damaged. So when you have the freeing, really, even though it's a problem, it will give you a very good indication that you have to inspect further. So this is something we're going to be seeing a few examples and for you guys to notice it and practice when you go out there in the helicopter to check for freeing and that will give you a better understanding of what I'm talking about. This helicopter in peculiar uh, had about 600 hour inspection done about 30 hours ago and if you look at it, look at how many rivets are working. All are loose, even in here. You cannot, you don't see it in here, but pretty much all around the vertical fin, all the it was working out. And uh, this is a very stressful section of the airframe because of the anti torque. In here, we're going to see the feeding where you attach the tailbone to the forward fuselage, and you can see two rivets or high locks ribbon working, and that means they are not tight, they are loose. Furthermore, we're gonna hear on the main rudder, uh, we're gonna have the pillow block, which is made of aluminum, and the housing made of steel. And if you look at it here, you're gonna see all around here freeing, all is loose. What I found out, all this knot or the torque of the bolts are, they were loose, they were no torque at all. In here, something that uh, concerns me, and uh, really, uh, even though you might think it's something else, this is a human error. Uh, inside the main rotor hub, this is a grip, and this is the pitch horn, okay? The pitch horn, uh, inside here, you're gonna have a steel bushing that goes inside the grip, and the grip, again, is aluminum. What happened is uh, the, the, the correct process is you're gonna install the pitch horn into the grip with a uh, wet primer. So really you wanna glue it in there. What I'm saying with this is when you never you're gonna remove the pitch horn, uh, it's gonna be very hard to remove it. What happened is some customer or some stu, uh, mechanics, they like to install the pitch horn with uh, CPC grade two, Mastinox, 
And when you're doing this, you are uh, provoking freedom. And if you look at it here, and look at it here, and look at it here, all that black stuff coming out is telling you that the pitch horn is loose and it's not uh, properly torqued. Or this already moving inside of there that maybe you hold here where the bushing goes is already worn out. All this is critical part and again, due to the way people, people are doing the process for installation, just using the wrong product, you are doing human error. This is a, a, a problem. So anytime you're doing this kind of uh, installation, you are inducing problems. So make sure you read the books. And yes, sometimes the process for installation will be will make you to rem for the removal section uh, process very hard and that is okay my advice in order to remove a pitch horn is going to be a very long process you need to use wood you're going to have to heat it in here and with a mallet and a piece of wood you are not going to use aluminum and that's going to be very hard to remove it, and that's okay you want it to to be difficult for removing of the pitch horn this is another good sample of fritting. Uh, if you can see, this is a very bad one. If you can see how how bad it is, I mean, uh, you can see this very clearly uh, during the uh, your uh, daily inspection. My concern is that sometimes you find this after many hours of fly, which is supposed to be caught uh, on daily inspections. Again, make sure be familiarized with the color of this. It's a, a dark. Uh, if you have no oil, it's going to be a powdery, but normally because it's going to be mixing with oil, grease, hydraulic, whatever you have in the area, it's going to be like a paste. And that's kind of the color you're going to have. And that means something is not right. One of the most, my most uh, preferred location to inspect a helicopter anywhere I go around the world is uh, the rotor brake system. The rotor brake system is combined of a rotor disc and we're going to have the inboard caliper and outboard caliper. These two caliper you get here combined together it make the rotor brake system. Now if you look at it one of the problems we have is removal installation. Yes I can go through these holes right even here and I can call the safety wire and I can go with a socket and remove the three bolts and remove the whole thing together. Removing one thing, when you're gonna install it, you have to remember that this uh, bolt here, the safety wire is a cross safety wire, not a single safety wire. So what happened is the right process to remove and install will be this one, this as follow. First, you remove the outboard caliper, then remove the disc, and finally remove the inboard caliper. When you're going to install it, the first part you're going to be doing is the inboard where you're going to have the three bolts. You're going to install it, torque it down, and safety wire. When you finish the process, then you install the disc, and finally the outboard um, caliper. Now, look at in here, one of the things that I like to look at everywhere I go again is right here. Look at the fritting. Already tells me that these bolts are not torn down correctly. That's why you got that fritting movement. Sometimes it gets so bad that the support case that is below this is all full of uh, dark stuff with oil. And that is telling me right there there's an issue with the rotor brake. Now, this is what I find out on this particular one. If you look at it, remember I told you this is a cross safety wire. Well, they did a single, and it's pretty loose so badly that I, because it's very confined where it's located, it's right behind the disc, that this guy really did a single safety wire. Really, this ball, they were not torqued down. And again, this is critical. You, whoever did this is inducing or is already doing a human error for not following the process. So guys, be careful when you... Uh, assemble, install a, a main rotor, rotor brake system. Another thing is lubrication. Lubrication, you have to learn, look in the books, depending on the uh, helicopter you work on it, you're gonna have what you call it, purging, 
or non-purging system. On this peculiar part of the helicopter, this is the tail rotor drive, uh, drive shaft system, and this section are called the hanging bearing. This part, this sample is called hanging bearings. And the bearing we got here are non-purging. That means you're going to, every 300 hours, you're going to use mobile 28 and you're going to put enough grease that just a little bit of grease can come back from the back or the front, just a hair. You are not going to purge the old grease out. Now, there are many places in the helicopter that you have to really, you're going to pump a lot of grease and remove the old grease until the new grease come out. I tell you right there, do you ready service or you purge the old grease? Not on the hanger bearings. The hanger bearings is a non purging. You're just gonna replenish whatever is being burned out or drained out on the 300 hours. Now, when you're doing this kind of uh, bad practice where you're trying to push a lot of grease, what happens is many times you're gonna damage the seal. The seal is the, I can say, the weakest link on the bearings. And what happened is the bearing is bonded in place. And what happened if you put too much pressure on the lubricating, you can debond the seal and it can come out and causing this kind of an issue where there's no more grease. You have to remember this is alignment bearing and uh, anything that happened with that bearing uh, come apart, you are gonna be losing the anti-torque system. So be careful and follow the manual when you lubricate these uh, hanging bearings. Now, one of the problems we have uh, in many helicopters, the process is different. So you have to remember, we're a human being, you need to uh, sometimes stop, think about, and process, or even read the books while you're working on it. On um, this helicopter, it's a 412, we're going to have the, ma the main rotor knot assembly, and uh, this knot is a two-piece part. So. You have to remember that when you're going to lose the main rotor knot assembly, the first thing you have to do is remove the lower cone. On this particular, in this particular case, the mechanic forgot to remove the lower cone, causing the human errors where when he's trying to loosen him up, uh, he sheared the two pin. You're going to have two guys there that's only keep it together, the two pieces. See, you can shear off his metal aluminum. So you have to remember that uh, follow the books when you're doing removal or installation. Again, on the 412, the lower cone is going to be the first one to remove and the last one to install. So be careful out there when you're doing this on your helicopters. This one here is not a big of the deal, but I want to mention to you guys is about orientation. You're going to have the flex coupling of the 42 gear box in here and the forward adapter. By books, you're supposed to install this 60 degrees, which is in the center line of this. And then what happened in this particular, uh, particular case, this is no align. And people are came to me and say, Pablo, this is line. what should I do? And I can tell you that even in Bell, there was some kind of a conflict between the engineering, publications, even in Canada assembly, where we saw helicopter come from Montreal to Bell, uh, to the customer, where these were aligned, and the next one, they were not aligned. My advice is follow the books. The book will tell you they're supposed to have one side to another at 60 degrees. So watch out for this and make sure that uh, the orientation is correct. Now, this type of uh, grid feeding, this is, for instance, going to be uh, talking about a swast plate that I used for the 205 Huey 2, uh, 212, where we have a uh, Zerk. Zerk is this type of feeding a grease feeding where you're going to have a needle where you're going to put some pressure on it so you can lubricate on this case the scissor this is the scissor on the swast plate what happened is sometimes it's very hard to hold the grease needle in place it might be damaged worn out so if you look at it the guy 
they were doing the he missed it many times and he created a lot of scratches. I know that sometimes it can be exaggerated because really these scratches are just he removed the paint and that's not big of the deal. I'm more concerned about when he removed or scratched the metal. If you go to the overhaul book, we're going to have different criteria and Bell uh, dissect the part, if I can say this, in different sections. They go by cross uh, lines, solid lines, or maybe uh, a lot of lines. So whichever section you are investigating or looking at it, like in this case, this one here, we're talking about this part here, which should tell us that the maximal, maximum mechanical damage is 20,000. So just a plain lubrication, if you don't do it right, you can damage the part. So next time, you are not going to be doing anything here, but whenever you go to overhaul, maybe the guy doing a, 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 a very good inspection, he's going to scratch it. He's going to scrap it, I'm sorry. And when you scrap the part, this part costs a lot of money. And again, it's a fly control part. So be careful when you're doing even lubrication. This happened to me, and uh, this is something that uh, my, my idea here in the human errors is ask questions. Last year I went to Indonesia, we're doing some training there. It caught my attention on the crosshead. I never seen it before, even though I go on the part number, and the part number is written down here. So my first thing that came out was, is this the bogus part? I never seen it before. In the past, this was round. It never was sharp or uh, very um, a square section. This, uh, if you look at a, a U crosshead on the 412, 212, 205, 2 even a, a single 212 on the uh, Eagle, they used to be round part. The part never was square. So it caught my attention and even look at the part number, I asked question to Bell um, and uh, it was agreed it was a good part. My question all this, anytime you have any doubt of any part you're getting from stock room or anything, and uh, you have anything, call Bell. Any any uh, region in the world is covered by a tech uh, tech rep guy. Uh, C, uh, I used to call it a CSE, uh, Customer Support Engineering. Um, but uh, on the web, on Bell Helicopter webpage, you can go into the region you are located and you're gonna have a person that can support you, help you any, any way. And I believe Bell is proactive on get, making sure that any part you install in the helicopter is not bogus part. So again, uh, check the part number, check the part. If you have any doubt, ask questions. Don't just leave your doubt and install a part that you don't believe uh, it might be a bogus part, okay? This one is going to be related to bending of the, uh, uh, the flapping stop on the tail rotor where if you remember a long time ago there was an uh, ASB that if you find this uh, stop bent you're going to throw away the stop and the joke. But uh, what happened is Bell started noticing that uh, during manufacturing uh, it, have, uh, it could be a little bow and I give you this indication that it could be about 20,000 gap and that would be okay. My point is that every single time you're going to install the um, the flapping stop, make sure that you uh, check it out for straightness and uh, install it then. Because remember, every 25 hours we check it out for any bending of this and it can give you a false indication. And again, if you have any question, talk to your tech support uh, representative. And this is all about this short video about human errors, video number two. I hope you enjoy and you have a great day. Thank you, Pablo Linares with HTI Global. Have a great day. Bye-bye.